Hi everyone, Dead Battery here, and thank you for joining me on my channel. So today's video is going to be on this really awesome handheld that came out in Japan. It's called the Wonder Swan. I may have a problem though. I own a couple of these, and I will show them to you. They made a couple different kinds. They made the Wonder Swan, the Wonder Swan Color, and then the Wonder Swan Crystal. The Wonder Swan looks like this. This is what the original Wonder Swan looked like. It was black and white. Then I have a limited edition or a special edition of the Wonder Swan color, and it is a Final Fantasy one, the Wonder Swan crystal. And see, and see over here, it does say crystal. So the crystal is what we're going to do the video on today. I decided to put an IPS screen in the Wonder Swan crystal. And the reason I decided to do that was I did find this one in the junk section and it had a burnt screen. I know a lot of people are Pokemon fans. I was a Digimon fan growing up, so I was kind of excited when I found a couple Digimon games for the Wonder Swan. The interesting thing about the Wonder Swan is you can play it horizontally or vertically. This game's called Gunpei, and it's a puzzle game, but this one you play vertically. The company I got the screens from is called Retro Game Repair Shop. I also bought this, which is a rechargeable battery. However, I haven't decided if I'm going to use it yet. To take this apart, it's pretty simple. It just has six screws on the back. Inside of this is just another polarizer. I just peeled off the burnt part of it and put a polarizer screen in just so I could use it. For this installation, you do need to remove the foam here. It's just held down by a piece of two-way tape. So after you peel all the foam off, just get something you can peel the tape off with and it should come off pretty easily. The next step is attaching wires to the battery terminals and there are instructions with this so it lays out exactly how to do it, where to put the wires and what side they need to go on.
This board is what connects the motherboard to the new screen. There are two pads on it. You have to solder down the wires. Make sure you know which one goes where for ground. The instructions are very easy to follow. They do sell pre-trimmed cases or cases that fit the IPS screens, however I didn't see a point in buying a new case since I already have this one. So the first important step is actually making sure that everything is correct and turning it on before you seal it up. And as you can see, the screen works perfect and it looks very crisp. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but I can definitely tell how crisp and clean it looks compared to the older screen. At this point, I did make sure it was all lined up properly. I put down the tape on the inside to hold the screen. And then I went through, put all the buttons back into place and I'm starting the reassembly. This part has two little antenna that stick on the inside of your case. One of them is for brightness and the other one is to change the screen color. It goes through black and white and different tones like red, blue, and green. Once you stick them to the inside of the case, you can access them by touching those spots on the outside of the case. I did feel like this was a tighter fit. I'm gonna have to do a little more research on the cases to see if the cases were larger. I didn't think they were, but after I turned it on, I did notice a mark up there in the left corner. As I mentioned on the outside of the case, you can push the sensors at the top and it will cycle through the different colors you can have. I know that my screen is a little bit scratched, but it still looks really good. And then here is the brightness if you need it lighter or darker. I do feel that this one looks really nice with the black and white. This game's really cute, you just have to line up these lines before it hits the top and it gets you points. So as I mentioned, I felt like the screen and putting it back together in the shell did feel like a tighter fit. So I'm assuming that 
that little mark up in the corner of the screen is because it's being squished. So I am going to do some research and find a different case for this and see if that makes a difference. I feel like I'm not having too much luck with screens. Every time I put a new screen in, I always get like a little mark here or there. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong, but I know when I tested it, it looked fine until I put it in the shell. So I'm really just thinking it might be a little bit of pressure. Since this screen change went really well, I am thinking about just swapping out my Final Fantasy Wonderswan color with an IPS screen as well. I'm not planning on selling these. I'm going to keep them as my own. So I think the new screens will be a lot nicer to play with. Thank you for joining me on my adventure with a new IPS screen. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share with your friends and I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye!